Hello. Castles, the ultimate architectural symbol of medieval power and authority, come into their own in this country with the arrival of the Normans, a key strategic weapon in securing their position as conquerors. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle recorded at the time that they, the Normans, filled the land full of castles. They cruelly oppressed the wretched men of the land with castle works, and when the castles were made, they filled them with devils and evil men. Three or four Norman-style castles had been built in England before the conquest, introduced by Edward the Confessor and his followers on Edward's return from exile in Normandy to guard at the marches from Welsh incursions. Within two decades of the Battle of Hastings, more than 80 Norman castles had been built in this country. By the end of the 12th century, the number exceeded 600. Most of the Anglo-Saxon population of England would have lived in the shadow of a castle, a constant reminder of subjugation to their Norman masters. Linked by the Thames to the Royal Complex at Westminster, the building of the Tower of London was commissioned by William the Conqueror. The riverside site, immediately east of the city, was chosen to consolidate Norman grip on England's main trade and business centre. At the heart of a military stronghold and royal residence, the White Tower, at 90 feet high, one of the tallest towers in Europe at the time, was an intimidating presence, dominating its surroundings. During recent refurbishment, it was revealed the outer walls extended beyond the height of the original roof. The tower had been deliberately built higher than necessary, given vanity height in modern architectural terms, and then whitewashed to add to the impression of power. Norman castles were the embodiment of conquest and control. Three prefabricated timber castles were shipped over flat-packed with the invasion fleet. One is shown being assembled in the Bayer tapestry. Many of the castles that followed were originally built of timber for speed and later replaced in stone. The common design was a sturdily built tower or keep with thick walls set on high ground within a walled and palisaded courtyard or bailey, housing stables, barracks, kitchens and other domestic buildings, and typically with a moat or ditch outside. Entry was via a gatehouse, and there might be an emergency entrance, a postern or sally port, a kind of standby back door. This castle is at Launceston in Devon. The keep is set on an artificial mound or mott, a design called Motton Bailey. A closely related model using a natural eminence rather than a constructed mot is known as a ringwork. Peveril Castle at Castleton in Derbyshire is an example of a ringwork. These and similar fortifications have undergone changes over the centuries, but the basic design features remain. In a land of predominantly single-storey wooden buildings, mot and bailey castles looming over their surroundings would have had a powerful psychological impact. The Normans located their castles in prime strategic sites. Any existing Anglo-Saxon occupation was simply swept aside, buildings demolished to clear the necessary space. Whole occupied quarters of Cambridge, Huntingdon, Northampton and elsewhere were cleared. At Lincoln, on the direct authority of King William, 166 Saxon houses were pulled down. The area had earlier been the site of a Roman fortress and was chosen for the same reasons, a position enabling control of the strategically important routeways of Ermine Street and the Fossway and via the River Witham and Foss Dyke, the River Trent. Lincoln Castle was unusual in having two motts. The only other double mot castle in England was Lewis in East Sussex, built by William of Warren, first Earl of Surrey, who fought alongside William at Hastings. Houses belonging to the Abbot of Coventry were demolished 
to make room for Warwick Castle on a sandstone ridge overlooking the River Avon. The southwest corner of Tamworth was cleared and an artificial mound 50 feet high constructed using alternate layers of earth and stone for a Mott and Bailey Castle built for Robert Dispenser and in a position to command a crossing of the River Tame. Tamworth, one of the best preserved Norman Mott and Bailey castles in England, was a highly visible imposition on the medieval town, a permanent reminder of where power lay and who was in charge. King William had a Mott and Bailey castle at Windsor built to guard a strategic stretch of the River Thames. Despite changes and additions, the site of the original tower keep still stands out and is a dominant feature of the local landscape. Edward I secured his hold on Wales with the creation of 17 new castles, including the famous Iron Ring of fortresses at Carnarvon, Conway, Harlech and finally Beaumaris, collectively now designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Carnarvon and Conway were built on sites formerly occupied by Welsh princes, hammering home the message about who now held power in the land. Edward appointed Master James of St George Desperanche, the leading architect of the day, this is his statue at Beaumaris, as Master of the Royal Works in Wales, to oversee construction and incorporate the latest design innovations in castle building. These included at Beaumaris, concentric walls and non-aligned outer and inner gates. Edward's Welch castles were more than highly effective military strongholds. They were also palaces, symbols of royal authority with well-appointed apartments and gardens to impress guests. A step down from castles, medieval manor houses were often fortified. From the 12th century, licenses were sought from the crown to permit the addition of defensive parapets. In the later medieval period, these architectural touches became regarded as status symbols, added for show rather than for serious military purposes. And they will be my topic next time. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.